Welcome back to the Wallace Crazy Podcast. Welcome back. Welcome hey, back, mate. people. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope everybody's been fine. Hope everybody's been taking care of themselves and their family. Today, we're back, and we have a special guest. We have Patience here with us today. Celeste is back, and welcome back, Hello. guys. Hi. So before I get Thank started you. with the ladies, we got the ladies in the building. Before I get started, I just want to share some thoughts I have on my mind. So um, on this show, we kind of celebrate the women, celebrate people, and just people that we think are amazing. And that's something we're going to always continue, just highlighting great people. And today we have Patience, we have Celeste back. And um, before we get started with the ladies, I just wanted to take a time out to just, you know, just let people know, like, just bring attention to people as far as guys. Like, a lot of times we expect guys to be that superhero or that guy that's invincible or tough or don't have no feelings. So this week, ladies, I want to challenge you guys. So with your father, with your uncle, with your cousin, with your husband, with your boo thing, <laughs> ask him how he's doing this week. And really don't just ask him, but just lean into it. Like, really ask him what's going on, how's work going, how's life going, and just really just... Talk to them, pull them to the side, because we as guys, we don't vent. We don't talk about things that's going on. A lot of us just let things build up, and it'd be World War Three, or we take it out of somebody, we take it out <laughs> on the kids. And this week, just really pull the person to your life, the guys in your life, and just ask them how they're doing. And just really just, you know, really just check on them, whether it's a friend, whether it's a cousin. Just really lean into that this week. So with that being said, I'm here to celebrate the ladies today. And we want to welcome our special guest, Patience. Welcome, Patience. Welcome, Patience. Thank you for having me. Thank you so <laughs> much for being here. So before we get started with Patience, I just want to highlight my cousin, Celeste. <laughs> and I just want to tell her that I love her and I appreciate I her. I love you too. And I had an amazing, amazing time with celebrating her birthday month. And... <laughs> <laughs> And just really just, you know, just it's always great to see people get the love and the energy they deserve. Like Celeste is one of them cousins in the family that's always looking out for everybody, always sharing the love, always cooking the good food, <laughs> always cooking the good food. <laughs> and just always making sure we got a safe space at her house to just have fun, mm -hmm. just to laugh, just to smile, to have a good time with her and her husband. And they are amazing daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always to highlight my little cousin because right. she's amazing. <laughs> yes, she is. And I, oh. Look, I was talking to her about dance. Like, you and your dad, y'all going to have to get me together on that dance floor. <laughs> I saw what y'all was doing. I see how y'all be doing y'all thing. <laughs> she just laughed uh -huh. and everything. But, like, just being at your party and just celebrating your birthday and just seeing everybody give you the love that you deserve. Like, it was just awesome. And then just, you know, seeing... You know, my little cousin and Biddy on that dance floor and mm -hmm. doing their thing. It was just amazing. <laughs> Thank I'm a, you. I'm going to post these videos and these pictures on this page because <laughs> y'all just thinking, oh, he's just saying, no, I'm going to show these, these them <laughs> dancing. I'm going to show the beautiful pictures they had, and I'm going to highlight them and show them this week because when I say her birthday party was everything, oh, your birthday yeah. party was everything. Thank you so much. And it Thank was you. I dope. really enjoyed it. It was just dope being there. The food was good. The drinks was good. And <laughs> I was happy to have a day off. So, <laughs> you know, it was great. And just see family I haven't seen in a long time. Yeah. And just meet, you know, more of your family. And mm -hmm. just, you know, really celebrate and just smile and have a great time. Even with Easter going over you guys' house, you know, um, looking at, you know, just going over the pictures and eating and drinking good and, you know, seeing Biddy soup from when he was <laughs> <laughs> six years old. And it, it was just amazing, man. And I just want to tell my cuz, my big cuz, I love you, man. Biddy, Turk, you guys, I love you. D, I love you guys. You, you guys do an amazing job, like, creating that space and being an older cousins and just making sure we're laughing and having fun and just... You know, I want to build on that. I want that momentum to keep going. I want us all, whether we agree, disagree, I want us all to be able to be in spaces where we celebrate each other, loving each other, and just celebrating each other. So, yeah. Celeste, did you enjoy your birthday? Yes, I did. Tell us about your birthday. I really month. did. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I was saying at my party, um, mm -hmm. my original plan was to have a celebration for my birthday, but for other women. Uh -huh. hmm. And so when I went there, uh, 
the uh, the young lady that owns the uh, event space, mm -hmm. she said, wait a minute, it's your birthday, but you're going to celebrate other women. Uh -huh. So I said, yeah. And she was like, no, you're not. She's like, you're a giver, right? And I said, yes, I am. But she, she caught on to, you know, based off of what I told her. Uh -huh. And she said, well, you know what? This time we're going to celebrate you. And I sat there and I just kind of, I got tears in my eyes because I'm so, so often I'm giving, giving, mm -hmm. giving, giving. So, so for her to speak life into me and say, hey, we're going to celebrate you, I took it and ran with it. That's <laughs> and so that's what I did this year. I really celebrated me and it feels amazing. Awesome. Like I'm still on a high from it. Like, but it was different because I, part I, part I participated in celebrating me. Mm -hmm. Usually it's just, you know, you just let everybody, you know. Yeah. And this time it was like, Nope, I'm going to plan my party. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And that's exactly what I did. And I absolutely enjoyed myself. Awesome. Yeah, yes. I was reading some of the comments in the post and I was like, oh, man, that's what's up. Like, <laughs> it's always great to see people showing their love and appreciation. Yes, for and somebody. that's another thing. I usually take the time and I actually read every post. Mm -hmm. But Facebook will not let me be great. I guess <laughs> it, I was receiving so many comments. I'm assuming I was receiving so many comments that it was just like, well, as I'm trying to, you know, respond, mm -hmm. it was like, nope, nope. It kept knocking me off. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, Facebook, I'm going to just let it go. So um, I get to it when I get, I to, get it. to it. That's yeah. the good thing about it because, like, even when you get all those comments and everything, responses, you can always go back to it. Yes, I had some beautiful know. cards, I and I literally took my time, and I had over, like, oh, it was a 63 birthday cards. Mm. And I just took my That's time and I read every last one. Yes. I cried and yes. I cried and I cried. Mm. But it was tears of joy. I really That's did enjoy up. it. I really did. That's what's up. Yes. And with that saying, guys, we have a special guest. We have Patience here joining yes, us. Yes. Welcome, Patience. Well, thank you. Now, I wanted Patience here because last time she was here, she was kind of behind the scenes. And after having a conversation with her, I said, we need you on the show. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I tell a lot of people that, and I figure it out. It don't happen right away sometimes, but I make sure that I'm, a, I'm making sure that I deliver on what I said. Mm -hmm. So with our schedule, both our schedules and everything, I did what I normally do. I set it out far away and then I say, I kind of remind you and let you know. And me and Patience stayed in contact. And I know she's a busy woman, and when I sent her the message, she was just like, we're going to make it happen. So I, was, I, I felt it was my duty to make sure she was here because, you know, I love celebrating people that just make a difference. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, this show is all about making a difference and bringing people on that's, you know, cool and just do their own thing and help out. And they might not get the awards or get all the the Oscars and the Grammys <laughs> and all that, but this is our Oscar. And right. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to celebrate Patience. Welcome, Patience. Welcome, welcome. Patience. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here, Thank Patience. Thank you. So, Patience, one of the main things that grabbed my attention that uh -huh. I wanted to talk to you about uh -huh. is being a PK kid. Oh, that was interesting to you, huh? Yes. <laughs> oh. Tell us about being a PK kid and what is a PK kid. Oh, well, a PK kid is a preacher's kid. Mm -hmm. And so if I would tell you about being a preacher's kid, um, a preacher's kid, most of the time when pe pe people uh, in our community will say, oh, you a preacher's kid, there's a negative connotation that mm. comes uh, mm. behind that. My father, um, Pastor, or Emeritus Pastor Leonard Thomas. I like that, Emeritus. Yes. Because uh, he's no longer pastor and he retired after 45 years. Let's get that That's great. Applause, yes. That's great. Uh, he had he has four children and I'm the oldest of four. Okay. And um, I come from a long lineage of of Baptist preachers. Okay. Mm. So uh, as an adult, I can now reflect on the fact that. He raised us the way that he was raised, okay. mm -hmm. being a preacher's child. Mm -hmm. And when you're a preacher's child, you're always thinking about protecting mm -hmm. your children. Mm -hmm. uh, preachers, <clears throat> just like any uh, person in leadership, be it a politician, be it a person of, of distinguished uh, community representation, 
those people are going to be under a different uh, lens when mm -hmm. it comes down to how uh, you move. Mm -hmm. People are going to always be looking at how you conduct yourself, your behavior, you know, the things that you do as an individual, you are going to be looked at a little differently under a heavier mm -hmm. microscope, mm -hmm. a, 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 a stronger lens of microscope than the next person who does not have the same, a, a different title. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what I've learned as a preacher's kid is that we were um, sheltered. We were very much so sheltered, and it was because of that. Um, the, you know, preachers themselves have a lot of um, um, concern mm -hmm. um, because they're human, you mm -hmm. know, just because you have to minister and you have been called to preach does not change the fact that you still walk in flesh. Mm -hmm. right. And so um, if they are um, making sure that they can stay rid of scandal, they're doing the same thing for their children. Mm -hmm. So as a preacher's kid, you know, we couldn't go to parties. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't learn how to roll skate real good. <laughs> <laughs> and I wish I wish I could have I wish I could have learned how to roll. Isn't too late? <laughs> now that's what they say, but <laughs> you know, I am now fearful of falling. Okay, and it's the difference when you know the, the younger you are, learning yeah, anything yeah. is mm -hmm. different. And but, that recovery, yes, yeah, that's true. You know, that's but true. um, uh, you know, playing cards. You know, we couldn't spend the night out. Mm -hmm. You know, we only could stay at my aunt's house. Mm -hmm. And it was just because we had to be, we were protected. Mm -hmm. And so the moment that we had, and, and because of the fact that just like preachers, we talk about that whole first family deal. Mm -hmm. um, or even if you weren't the first family, you still were a minister's mm -hmm. child. Yeah. Um, when, we t when you talk about Christians, your whole purpose is to be uh, examples of Christ-like behavior. Okay. And once uh, people, when you're out in the public and you're in the world, you have to represent what the light of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so um, that is what you have to, when you don't do that, people who are not of Christ mm -hmm. and don't have the same amount of knowledge mm -hmm. uh they would then begin to say well how in the world is that minister going to preach to my son or my daughter and he can't keep his own daughter yeah. or son mm -hmm. under control yeah. mm -hmm. or how he going to speak to my how he going to speak uh how is he going to speak life into my marriage and he mm -hmm. can't handle his own marriage yeah. and so you have to uh you have to be protective Mm -hmm. And you don't know that coming up. Mm -hmm. Right. You look at it like, why, well, why can't I? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> because things are naturally, um, there's a developmental process we all go through as children. Mm -hmm. You want to naturally learn and seek and you're curious. And, and so the moment that you have a little bit of freedom, which normally comes around that developmental plane of, uh, I'll say, 12 to uh, 18, mm -hmm. you know, uh, where you're going through that turbulence of puberty mm -hmm. and, you know, you're trying to really find yourself, then uh, that's when you kind of start seeking mm -hmm. those yeah. opportunities to get into things. Mm -hmm. You want to be accepted, you mm -hmm. know, you want to feel normal, you know, and it's nothing really different than, you know, besides the fact that your father or your mother is a, pre a preacher yeah. and your girlfriends is not, but yeah. you know, y'all going to school, everybody can do what they want to do, and, but you, but can. you can't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much, pretty much how it was growing up. But, um, and you don't appreciate it until you are in a position of adulthood and you can see the benefits yeah. of mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Now I was, have you guys seen Bel Air? Mm -hmm. I have. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, that's great. I'm glad y'all both seen it. So, even, like, okay, now, you remember in Bel Air when Uncle Phil was kind of running for, you know, mm -hmm. office or whatever. Yes. Um, did you guys, like, did your father ever have that 
talk where it's like, okay, we as a family gonna come together. This is what we gonna do. This is we not gonna do. Did y'all have that or was it like expected? Did y'all father? Did y'all father like sit y'all down? Like, okay, we're gonna do this. This is how we gonna carry around. This is how we gonna handle things. Did y'all have that conversation or was it just like expected? Uh, I think that's a really good point because mm -hmm. um, when you talk about uh, child development, you mm -hmm. shouldn't always tell a child no, no, no yeah. without telling them the reason why. why. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you can explain to the child why something has to be a certain way, then it becomes relevant, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And so we didn't grow up during a time where the parents uh, afforded us the uh, liberty For real. of being able to uh, talk to us. Mm -hmm. It was just, you do as I say, yeah. and you do it quickly. Mm -hmm. And that's not a bad thing either because we don't have that now yes. and there's a whole yes. different repercussion yes. for not having those same uh, guidelines and mm -hmm. rule of hand that they uh, raised us by. Mm -hmm. However, um, you know, no, to answer your question. There was no, let's sit down and talk about it. It was mm -hmm. like, we know as the parent what's best and you follow suit. Mm -hmm. And so if there was that conversation, mm -hmm. things would have probably been a little better for us yeah. Yeah. because I we would have been, we could have, yeah. under, we would have understood it. And that's mm -hmm. the difference between our generation and this generation. Exactly. You know, I spent a lot of time talking to my children mm -hmm. at a very young age, mm -hmm. I think, because I didn't have that um, yeah. that yeah. opportunity. My, fa my parents and I are talking every day and we talk about absolutely everything now <laughs> as adults, but that did not happen growing Damn. up. Mm -hmm. And you know what, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's good to hear that because even in you know just a regular household we were taught whatever goes on in the house stays yeah. in the house mm -hmm. and so um just just like with my daughter now um i that's what i do because mm -hmm. we were we didn't you know just i mean you were a preacher kid but the same thing mm -hmm. went on in you know our house as well and so um mo when you now that you when you say you start ex you know talking to your children mm -hmm. uh at a younger age do you see a difference from as far as how they show up mm -hmm. now rather than how you may have been able to because you didn't have those conversations? Mm -hmm. Do you see like a difference? I feel like my children are balanced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're balanced mm -hmm. and they are, uh, uh, I feel like they're uh, well-rounded adults, mm -hmm. you know, and they still got what they needed. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes, or a lot of times, you know, my son will say, thank you for raising me the way that you did. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I still, because what you know is what you no. replicate. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what you do, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, I still raise my children like I was raised. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, my sister being the youngest one, she has a different parenting style than I have. Mm -hmm. You know, and her children are different than my children. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so that's the thing. It's just about what you do and it's all, and, and, and my sister is different because my parents were different by the time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> she came around. That youngest always gets a lot Always, easier. yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so we always hear like, even with the PK kids, it's this whole structure. Like, really dig down and tell us some things that, like, give us, like, two examples of, like, something that was, like, all the way strict that other kids could do that y'all couldn't do. And then sh share, like, some fun things and some fun experiences that y'all had. So, like, really just kind of, and take your time, just think of, like, two things that you feel other kids did that y'all couldn't do. And then think of like some fun stuff that y'all did enjoy. <laughs> because even with all struggle and even mm -hmm. with my pops, like my pops was big on y'all not about to be all the way around the block. Mm -hmm. Stay on this block. Mm -hmm. I want to see y'all. Mm -hmm. And you can't go over this person's house. And you know, when you a kid, you're like, well, I can't. Right. And then when you get older, you understand that person in jail. Mm -hmm. And them people don't got yeah. no structure. So it ain't good. Even when that, spending the night over people. Yeah, have, it's not good to anything. have a lot of freedom. Mm -hmm. So like share with us some of the things that 
you know, y'all had to deal with that y'all didn't agree with, but you understand, and then share some stuff, fun times that y'all did have. Like, what were some of the perks of being a PK kid? Okay, well, you want the perks first? No, nah, okay. I mean, either one. Okay. <laughs> Give me the strict <laughs> or the perks first, either one. Well, I would say one of the perks uh, was the fact that we had uh, the church. We had the church. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, the church was the village. Mm-hmm. And um, they taught us how, they, they made sure that we had what we needed to be um, well-rounded, mm-hmm. you know, uh, in every way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the... And then being a, a pastor's daughter came with those benefits too, because you know the pastor is the the head of the church and mm-hmm. benefits that the congregation kind of you know uh, will take care of the pastor. Mm-hmm. We got those benefits yeah. too. Like I remember, and I'm the same way today. <laughs> I never stood in line for food. There ain't no wrong uh, with that. That's a perk. That's a perk. <laughs> and I, that's a perk. Up, and I don't stand in line right now for food uh, because, like because of the fact that that's how I was raised. Right. Right. And so, anyway, so um, <laughs> the church was definitely a perk. I have extended family from grandparents to aunts and uncles to cousins, mm-hmm. you know, that are not blood but are my family. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, another uh, another perk would have been just the fact that we had the benefit of knowing God. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. And yes. Say that's that one more time. We, Say that's that's one more time. we had the perk. benefit of mm-hmm. knowing God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a definite perk. That's definitely a perk. And mm-hmm. because we were... Um, given the the gift of him early mm-hmm. uh it it laid the path for our lives mm-hmm. and so uh and the favor on our lives was different that's what's up wow that's good yeah and so it's nothing you know you may you may feel like ah, oh, you know as a kid that I have all of this, uh, all these eyes on me. Everybody got to be trying in my I business, can only imagine. Mm-hmm. trying to figure out mm-hmm. what I'm doing. You, you know, know, your dad don't want you doing you, why, that. Why? Why you over here? You know, <laughs> I see your you. Down. I saw right. your daughter on the bus. <laughs> why is your hair <laughs> up like that? She wasn't supposed to be on this side of town. <laughs> you know. However, it definitely carried us through, and it still does today. And mm. so, it's nothing that I would change yeah. about that that's great mm-hmm. and that's the that's good thing great. that's what i love mm-hmm. because like as much as we talk about the structure and the toughness we mm-hmm. had like it made us who we are oh yeah. yeah and it's like we look at some of the kids now like oh they need a lot to they need more toughness oh, yeah. like they need a more a little bit mm-hmm. more hugs and discipline oh, yeah. and everything because it's like i never understood like and i was telling celeste and Biddy them that when we was at the over your house for the holiday and i was like Man, my dad was so tough. It's like, man, we can't go around the corner. <laughs> like, man, we yeah. can't ride our bikes here. We, mm-hmm. we got to be in the house at this time. Everybody else mm-hmm. doing that. But mm-hmm. you understand, like, that developed that structure and helped you be able to be out here mm-hmm. and to make great decisions mm-hmm. and to understand, no, I can't do that. Right. I shouldn't do that. Right. That's a bad decision. Mm-hmm. So, like, at my church, and Celeste, I want you to come to my church soon. But okay. she's been to my church. Okay. So, <laughs> oh, like, yeah. yeah. So one of my favorite people, and I always, as a kid, you look at certain things. I remember Steve Harvey making a joke about this on Kings of Comedy. And, like, at my church, I feel like every, when I was a kid, my church growing up and my church now, at my church now, I love seeing this one person. And I want you to share your one person. This one person, I don't care what mood I'm in. Usually when I come in the house of the Lord, I'm good. Mm -hmm. But when I see Miss Jordan, I don't <laughs> care what attitude, what mood I'm in, how long my work week been. When I see Miss Jordan, it does it does something to me seeing Miss Jordan wow. because she's that person at our church that gives that energy. She's the choir director and she's like a Swiss Army knife at our church, and she's just awesome. 
energy. She speaks to everybody. She's happy. She don't play about her pastor. She mm-hmm. is, she'll catch you outside <laughs> if you do something to her pastor. But I love my Miss Jordan, and I love her to death. Aww. So who was your person when you was a kid and now that you kind of enjoy seeing when you went to church? Like, we love everybody. Mm-hmm. But Miss Jordan was my person. It's my person now when I go into church. And I see her, I know we're gonna be all right that day. Yeah. <laughs> so, who is that person when you was a kid, and who is that person now? Like I said, it's a little hard because when the whole church raised you, yeah. it's, you know, you yeah. have everybody, yeah. you know. But um, I would say that George Roberts okay. uh, is my uncle because my mother's sister married him okay and they uh are they they divorced and he then uh married another one of my loving aunts okay in the church and i love her just as dearly uh Mm -hmm. jeanette and um anyway i love uncle george uh because he is a servant okay (laughs) and he definitely like he never complained about nothing yeah and he he was my Sunday school teacher, mm-hmm. and um, now he lets me teach him Sunday school. Uh, and he always has something positive to say. Mm-hmm. And he sat up under my uh, dad and served as his chairman. And uh, he tr- and so my brother mm-hmm. took over the church. Was called to pastor the church after my father. Okay. Uh, retired and so he served under my brother for a couple of years mm-hmm. and he retired recently and so he's just always been around just a positive light him mm-hmm. never had nothing to say he raised his kids by himself you mm-hmm. know just a real stand-up kind of guy That's yep and so he always always got something good for you you good know job, George. Yeah. Good, good job good job good job, good job. Uncle George. <laughs> i love you mm-hmm Yep, so that's, that's my good. that's my person, and I could name about fifty other, but <laughs> I, that I see on a regular, and that was influential because, like I said, he taught me. Okay, so let's who was your person, kid and now. You know what? Because you a, go to what I call a mega church. <laughs> <laughs> so as a kid, it was Selena Hill, mm-hmm. and so she was she um she was my neighbor. Okay, and it, we had um. Her church was around the corner from us, and we would she would come and pick up all the kids, all the little girls on the block, mm-hmm. and she was we can go to her house. She gonna make sure our hair, our ponytails is good, <laughs> and we gonna walk. And she was a, a, a usher, mm-hmm. okay. and so um, we will walk. Um, I was introduced to God, but she is truly the person that really, really, really like come on. And we had no choice. We no, had no choice. We looked. If I looked forward to it every Sunday, and she would walk us up, and she would just she just taught us how to be ladies. And when we went to church, and we walked in the door, everybody knew that was Selena and her. She's like, "He's my goddaughter." She just claimed us, yeah. you know. And so, um, she just she was just abs- she's passed on now. Mm. But I will forever be grateful mm. for That's her. And mm. as an adult. Um, Miss Kavana, she is um, a choir member at Triumph, Mm -hmm. and I absolutely love her. Mm -hmm. I love her strength. Is I love her. You know, she just she's always full of life, and even when um, she's not, she's full of life. Yeah. You know, so those are my two people. Okay. You gotta say your campus, cause y'all, y'all, oh, y'all tri- all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Triumph. I, I I attend the Southfield campus. Okay, okay. that's mm-hmm. beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, those are my two people, and that's good because like I like you teach the kids like, and earlier on like we're not going to understand God right away as kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what I try to teach young kids and my kids like. When you go to church, like really kind of listen and understand what they're saying. Mm-hmm. Like you're not gonna get it, but mm-hmm. try to understand what they're talking about. Because yeah. if they talking about a long week, you, kid or not, you had a long week at school. Yep. You might be struggling in the class. If they talking about 
you know, working hard. You know you need to work hard to get that 4.0 or that 3.5. Mm-hmm. So it's just like find something, grab something. And I, like I said, going back to Steve Harvey, like I remember him saying the things that he <laughs> celebrated in church mm-hmm. and what he liked. You sound like, like my mama. Yeah, because it's just like go there. talking about Steve, Steve Harvey said. Man, I love Steve Harvey. And I, I, do I too. always I think do of too. him talking about that on the Kings of Comedy where he talked about church. Like that mm-hmm. stuck with me mm-hmm. because it's like, I remember being that kid sitting in church, and I grew up um, East Grand Boulevard, Church of God in Christ, when I was younger, mm-hmm. all the way till I can- went to Green Grove, became a member there. And it was just like, our pastor, Pastor Lawrence, like, man, he was incredible. Like, to me, like, when I think of pastors, like, I got him up there because, like, I felt what made him such an amazing pastor, like, he was able to connect with the little kids, mm-hmm. the teenagers. Like, he would be talking about stuff like we didn't even know he knew about. He was like, oh, I knew about Bella. We like, whoa, what you know about? Like, and he was just able to connect. And when he spoke, he spoke to everybody. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. like I'm speaking to the adults. I'm speaking to this guy who's struggling in his divorce. I'm speaking to the woman who's going through a divorce. I'm speaking to his family. And what I loved about him he hold us. He held men accountable. Yes. Like when you went up there and shook his hand, you wasn't just gonna be like no high and bad. Mm-hmm. He looked you in your face. Hey, James. Mm-hmm. You went to work the other day. Yeah. Did you make sure you get ready for to propose to that mm-hmm. woman? Like he put you on the spot in front. Wow, that's good. And I huh? love that because when he shook your hand, he held your hand. Mm-hmm. He looked you in your face, and he talked about a story to everybody that went up there and spoke to him. He could tell you like, oh, remember you was telling me, did you get that job from last yeah. week? Wow, did you great. do this? And mm-hmm. to share that, and he was like, before he stepped down, he was like 80, he was like 80 something, 90 mm-hmm. something. Wow. And he was still like relevant and, and vibrant mm-hmm. and just able to just still be a part of everything, still hold the people accountable. And I loved how he brought people in line because mm-hmm. we don't talk about how important the pastor job is. Yes. Like, whether it's the cook, whether yeah. it's the mother, the nurse, whether it's the ushers, like, he'll put you on blast, but it wasn't, like, embarrassing. It was right. just like, I need y'all to do this, nurses. Mm-hmm. Ushers, I need y'all to do this, and I need y'all to do this. And you don't see that. Like, a lot of times, it's a lot of behind-the-scenes mm-hmm. stuff, but when we was coming up, yeah. you got, if you was the deacons and you yeah. didn't go do what you was supposed to do, and you didn't get... We didn't have no choice. I don't even remember yeah. even thinking about not doing what they asked Man, us to it do. It was just like, <laughs> hey, quiet. Like, I remember a bishop, like, hey, we need to sing that song a little better right. or a little effort. <laughs> like, we need to act like we love the Lord uh-huh. here. And we all be like, and, no, and what I loved yeah. about Bishop... Nobody took it personal. Mm-hmm. You just looked at it like he loved us. He yes. wants us to work harder. It's called a true father in the ministry. Yes. yes. And yeah. when my pastor, Tony Pitts, like, he's only a like couple years older than me. And it's just like, when I chose to be a member of Green Grove, like I told people, he's my barber and he's a mm-hmm. barber. But I didn't join Green Grove because he's my barber and he's like a big brother to me. I joined because I prayed, mm-hmm. I talked to God, and I said, look, God, my pastor's gone. This don't feel like a church mm-hmm. home no more. Mm-hmm. And we don't talk about that. Mm-hmm. Like, and I had to make the decision to say, mm-hmm. I need to be somewhere where I'm getting my my, my soul felt. I'm mm-hmm. getting the word. I'm getting what I need. I need somebody that's going to push me. Yeah. Because a lot of times we think, oh, man, we busy. We work hard. But my he'll just pull me to the side and be like, or he'll just say, why you cut my hair? Like, I need to see you Sunday. Mm-hmm. And it ain't like, yo, you better be. It's right. just like. You know, we celebrate 79 today. Mm-hmm. So he like, 79, I need you here. I know you work a lot. I know you're doing a podcast, mm-hmm. but we don't put God last. That's Amen. it. That's and true. And I have to always, and I tell my son, I always have to check myself and be like, okay, I'm working hard. You know, I'm single now. I'm a father. But we don't put God last. Mm-hmm. Like, because no. just this mm-hmm. podcast can go away tomorrow. Right. You know, that job mm-hmm. can go away, but he ain't going nowhere. Mm-mm. So it's like a lot of times, even when he told me that yesterday, like, I love that he got that, like my pastor, former pastor had, he had that, I need you to, I'm, I'm holding you accountable. I need mm-hmm. you to step up to the plate. So when he said that to me yesterday, I told him. And I, I planned on coming anyway because I wanted to bring my stepmother today and I wanted to kind of show up. I haven't been there in a minute, so I'm like, let me 
Let me get back in the swing of things. And I ain't want to be that guy. Like, I know people say come, but I didn't want to be that guy to just show up on Easter and right. I missed a couple of weeks. <laughs> so, like, I'm going to come next week. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm going to make sure I'm there. And, and it was just beautiful being in a church home. And I just felt good having that guy that hold me accountable. That guy. And just, you know, for anybody that's feeling like I want a church home, like really sit down and do what I did. Like really talk to God, Mm -hmm. tell him what you want, tell him what you need, and just understand that he's going to put you in the right position. That's right. And I always went to Green Grove just to check on my big bro because he got got his opportunity to be a pastor. And I love that and I celebrated him. And I was just in there one day and it was like God just really spoke to me Mm -hmm. and was just like, this home, Mm -hmm. this where you supposed to be. You know, don't worry about, oh, he's your barber. Don't worry about he's your big brother. Don't worry about that. Is he holding you accountable? Mm -hmm. Is he making sure you tied? Is he Mm -hmm. making sure you doing what you supposed to do? And when I answered all those questions and I really said it, I came to him before I even joined. And I told him, like, big bro, I'm about to be a member. And he was like, oh, that's beautiful, man. Like, what made you do it? And I'm like, man. Like, when I'm in Green Grove, I feel at home. Like, I love Miss Jordan. I love the ushers. And the usher ladies hold me accountable. They be <laughs> on me like, oh, wait, I didn't see you. Where you been? <laughs> like, today, I haven't been in a minute. And the deacons will just, like, But it's good that they even at? notice. And that's what I yes, love. Like, yes. like, hold me accountable. Mm-hmm. Because I'm not. I can always hold myself accountable, but I love when somebody else yes, does. Yeah. I'm not that big where I don't feel. I'll, I'll never get that big where I feel like somebody can't hold me closer to God yes, or bring yeah. me closer. So, like, when I made that decision, it just was like this home. And ever since then, it's been home, and I know I made the right decision. It's a blessing. And, and, and that's important. Mm-hmm, it is. Yeah, so I would tell anybody, like, pray on it, visit it, because I've always been a visitor. And I've, I'll always go to different people's church because mm-hmm. I got a lot of family. So I'll go to my aunt church. Mm-hmm. I'll go to a cousin church. I went to friends church. And I went to a couple of places. I went to a couple of triumphs. And I'm like, oh, let me see. Yeah, this feel good. And they all feel good. But Green Grove just felt home. Mm-hmm. So it was like, yeah, this the place. So And then Green Grove hold me accountable. We <laughs> hold everybody. My big bro would tell you, like, he'll get mama together. Like, hey. <laughs> I'm the pastor here. Right. And he do the same <laughs> thing Bishop used to do. Like, he'll be like, hey, we all, I need the leadership to step up. Because mm-hmm. what I love about him, he do the thing my former bishop do where he say, leadership, how can we ask everybody else to do something if y'all not, not doing, doing it? it. Yeah. We need to work a little harder. We mm-hmm. need to do that. So, like I told him the other day, like, like, because I was watching, um, on Wednesdays I typically work. And I was watching Bible studies. Bible study, Bible, and he was basically like online, and that's the beautiful thing about online, because I could watch your Facebook, listen on Facebook mm-hmm. while I'm at work, and he was just like, man, a lot of times, we always asking God to do something, but what we, we do for do God? It, yeah. What we do for God? Like, we ask all, I need this, God, I need that. What are we doing? Mm-hmm. And that, that just made me, and I told him, like, I'm there Sunday, because, mm-hmm. like, I'll be a praying guy. I'll be talking to God all day, but mm-hmm. I got to make sure I'm doing my work, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you you made a um, go ahead a, um, a point about you know when you were mentioning the um, you know deciding mm-hmm. where you wanted to be as a church home, right? Mm-hmm. And you said you prayed on, which is what we should do. Yes, you know, because we always want to be guided by God. Um, uh, patience. I wanted to ask you though, um, have you uh, being a pre K kid, <laughs> have you ever had the thought of you know? Uh, like leading, leaving the leadership up under your family? And if so, um, how can you encourage somebody or give them some things to kind of think about? Of course, what James said, if that if someone was in that position and kind of thinking, you know, in that uh, aspect. Mm-hmm. That's a good question. Mm-hmm. That's a good question. Thank I've you. left, uh, I left my home church twice. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was gone for uh, years mm-hmm. at a time. Uh, so it's, I, you know, for me, it was necessary because growing up in the church, you serve and you minister under obligation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and you, from a child, you taught that Jesus is Lord and this is what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And the relationship is kind of 
force mm -hmm. on you, mm -hmm. you know. And then once you become an adult, you uh, learn for yourself and you have to have your own relationship. Mm -hmm. And leaving uh, my home church gave me an opportunity to just be able to uh, flourish spiritually differently. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It did. And so I will say that um, it's hard to, when you are a servant to serve at someone else's church yeah. and you know your family need yeah. you yeah. to serve gotta be. in the yeah. same yeah. capacity yeah. Uh, at your home church. And so uh, that's how we all ended up back. Oh, wow. At our home church, <laughs> yeah. my both my myself, my sister, and my brother, mm -hmm. we did. And so, um, you know, God does. Um, he works the way he does, mm -hmm. and it's all about making sure that you are being obedient. Yeah. And yeah. so we all were able to come back together, <laughs> and we all are there. That's beautiful. Yeah, That's good. and so. Yeah, I've left, and a lot of uh, people that I know that grew up in home churches do leave for that mm -hmm. reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, just to switch off the PK Kid, the last okay. question for the mm -hmm. PK Kid. Mm -hmm. What are the things that you enjoy doing? Because I know when you're part of that church home, what were some of the things you enjoy doing? Did you do the choir? Did mm -hmm. you usher? Like, mm -hmm. what, did it, what was the thing that you enjoy doing as a kid? As a kid? Yeah. Well, as a kid, we had to do everything. Yeah, but what was the one you liked? Was it the usher? Was it in the choir? Yeah, I, that's my ministry. I'm a, I'm a, a, a psalmist. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got the voice. Yeah. Well, no. Well, I, <laughs> I always tell people that in Detroit, mm -hmm. we come from so many great. I mean, Detroit births gospel singers mm, like yes. Motown, yeah, you yes. know, I mean, and they have all the skills are just enormous. So mm -hmm. I'm that I grew up with the old school where I can uh, harmonize. I have an ear for music. Okay. I can hear it. You know, I'm going to stay on. I'm on note. I can uh, make sure that the tone is good. Yeah. I'm going to get through the solo, <laughs> and it's good. So, but, yeah, that's my ministry. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. That's good. All right, yeah. far as, so, teaching. Mm -hmm. What got you into teaching? What made you say, this is this is the career I'm going to go into? Okay. Well, I am a educator. Uh, I taught in the secular um I taught in secular education for 12 years, okay. and um, I, yeah, I'm a second career educator. Okay. So I left uh, an IT profession at the time, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was trying to get out of the uh, field because they were requiring more from me, but I just felt like the glass ceiling in the like 2000, mid, like early 2000s, mm -hmm. uh, was where it was for a, a minority women. Mm -hmm. And so they was like, well, you gotta go back to school, you gotta go get your master's degree and all that. And I'm like, well, if I go back to school, I'm gonna go back to school to get something that I want. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because I'm gonna have to pay for it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I ended up going into education and I decided to do that because I was raising my children and I saw so many of my uh, peers, my Caucasian peers, uh, teaching our children and I was wondering how was that working because you know to be honest they just how could they relate right. yeah. <laughs> and so that was my initial I had a, you know a son and I was just trying to figure out how was all this working you know how could they actually reach because I knew what helped me mm -hmm. coming up uh, in um, the schools I had I had teachers that looked like me mm -hmm. and the the way that they cared and the way that they taught us mm -hmm. and the, the accountability was and how they reached out to our parents. It was mm -hmm. just something that was different. So anyway, uh, I got into teaching because I felt like there was a need for uh, children to have a representation that would, could that looked like them mm -hmm. primarily in um the charter uh, schools. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, 
That gotta be like, like I always say all the time, like, how do you, how do you deal with all them kids? <laughs> like, how do you like, like, what's your approach? Okay, it take, let's, look, it takes patience. Yes, <laughs> I like that. Perfect name. But like, uh-huh. what's your approach? Like, because it can be three different kids, mm-hmm. and those three different kids, it could be the one kid that's feeling like you know that they're not getting enough love. Mm-hmm. You know, the one kid that's just like, he's just a bully. But mm-hmm. you know he's yearning mm-hmm. for that attention. Mm-hmm. Then you got the one smart kid that's like ahead of everybody. Mm-hmm. That's sitting in the class like me, and I, I'm bored, and it's like, it's time to get these <laughs> jokes off. <laughs> and then you got the one kid that's just like, you know, like, oh, man, please don't pick me. Don't mm-hmm. pick me. Because, mm-hmm. like, I don't want to read in front of everybody. Mm-hmm. I'm struggling. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you notice those kids? And mm-hmm. what's your approach to those kids? Well, uh, because I, uh, because God is love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And God is, and because I possess God and God is with me mm-hmm. all the time, I exude that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I carry that into my classroom. And so every child that I meet uh, can feel that I'm coming from a genuine place. Mm -hmm. And children will respond and meet whatever expectation that you have of them if they feel that there is a relationship that has been established. Mm -hmm. And if that relationship is established based off of a true concern, a true love that they feel, Mm -hmm. they'll rise to whatever occasion and expectation that you have for them. And so a good teacher is gonna be able to know their children. Mm -hmm. The relationship Mm -hmm. is what, where it starts. The relational capacity is where it starts and stops. So if you, you, I can, I can, I can call it out. I know this kid is bored, mm-hmm. and I know this is why he's acting <laughs> out. Mm-hmm. I know that's why he wants the attention right now, you know. Mm-hmm. Or I know he's acting out because he doesn't quite get the, he doesn't understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And instead of asking for help, he would rather, you know, divert the attention in a negative way to, mm-hmm. you know, onto him or I can understand, I know when a child's hungry <laughs> and that's why yeah. he can't focus, right. you know, and so. Those early classes. Uh, yeah, uh, and so it's. Stomach growling. <laughs> it's a, you know, when they say the teacher has to be, you know, the counselor, mm-hmm. the yes. nurse, the therapist, the parent, um, the educator, mm-hmm. um, that's all true. And so, we just living in a time where it is definitely necessary for people who are going into the field to be going into it for the reason of, because yeah. uh, most people aren't going into no. the field. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so if you're there, they're going into it because they have a love for children, a passion for education. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. if you're there, you'll be able to see it. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. now real quick, and I'm gonna ask both of y'all this. So let's, I'm gonna start with you first. When I think of, like, you know, because I did some college, but I didn't finish. But um, when I think of teachers, I think of two teachers that was effective in their own way. And this old school kids, so y'all ain't going to relate to this. <laughs> we'll relate to it, but they're not going to relate to it. I think of two teachers. One was Miss Dubose. Mm-hmm. And to this day, I graduated in 1997. And Miss Dubose is that teacher. She got a Facebook page and everything. When we do reunions and everything, Miss Dubose is there. But Miss Dubose was the tough teacher. She did like I, I, I want to say like home ec or some other. It was like a home ec. Uh, it was another class too. But the the main thing I remember about Miss Dubose is she didn't play. Mm-hmm. She was that person. She followed you in the hallways. Yep. You skipped her class. <laughs> she was in them hallways. She held you accountable, and she was tough. <clears throat> she was old school. I remember Miss Dubose, and this was back in the day, kids. This was no <laughs> <laughs> abuse, but Miss Dubose, I didn't see Miss Dubose take her shoe off and throw it at people. <laughs> I didn't see with me running there late because I had to go through the other class. I'm talking to the girls in the hallway playing. I remember her grabbing me, hitting me on my shoulder. Like Miss Dubose was mm-hmm. hands on, but what everybody loved about Miss Dubose is she cared. Mm-hmm. Like she knew my mother. Yeah, she knew like family. And she cares so much that, you know, when she grabs you or threw a shoe at you or hit you, 
you knew it was pace or love, mm-hmm. and it was respect. Mm-hmm. Like, it wasn't no presentation like, this high is going to be in my class. You knew this lady didn't play. <laughs> so when Miss Du, when you everybody said, who you got on your class? You got Miss Dubos? You better make sure you're on time. Mm-hmm. You better make sure you listen. Don't talk in her class because Miss Dubos was, would lose her mind. She didn't play that talking when she talking. She didn't play that late. And she didn't play you playing no games. She would come to your other classes. She would talk to your <laughs> other teachers. So that's one person that stick to this mind. Like I said, this wasn't just a teacher that lasted. Okay, we graduated, didn't see her no more. She come to our reunions. Mm-hmm. She's on our Facebook page. We still talk to her. All of us love her. Like all her students from here to there, we all love her and appreciate her and show her love. That's cool. And then I remember Miss Ayler. Now Miss Ayler, the funny thing about Miss Ayler is she was connected to my first kid's mother and her husband was like best friends with my kid's grandfather. Oh, wow. So, of course, I never knew right. that. But I went to a dinner, one, I went to a barbecue one time or whatever, and she there. And I'm like, what's it? And she like, <laughs> oh, that's my husband. And, and the good thing about her was she was the first teacher that I felt was like a professor. Like, she held you accountable it wasn't no leniency stuff. If you got a, a 97, you got a 97. If you got a C and almost a B, you got a C. Mm-hmm. And it was like she literally waited by her door. If you was late, you couldn't come in her class. Mm-hmm. Like she was the first teacher I saw that if you late, you ain't coming in. If you talking, you leave out. Like I never saw a teacher say, get out of my class. You can't come in here. Or if you late, you are not coming in here. So those are two teachers that I felt was effective and they cared so much, and they prepared you for life. Yeah. So those are the two teachers I think about my whole life that always meant some and was there. So that's who are two teachers that you could think of? Well, as soon as you start speaking, I was like, oh yeah. So Miss Arlene Tyler mm-hmm. was my elementary. Okay. She had, I mean, when she walked in the room, you knew she didn't play. Mm-hmm. Very pretty, you know, was very well dressed. But when she opened her mouth. She did not play. Yeah. And just like you, um, that was like my favorite teacher. I was like the first one in class. It was just like she just, like you said, she didn't play. And then back then, teachers were able to paddle you. Yes. <laughs> yes. And she had them thick um, rulers, rulers taped up. Yeah. And she would bend that thing back. Not to me. I never got paddled because <laughs> I just knew not to play with her. But it was her. And then come to find out. My sister, we well, we grew up with her. Fa- I didn't know her, it was her family, mm. and so her mother raised us. Oh. Mm. Her her sisters raised us, mm. and I didn't know that she was the connection. And my sister had children with her nephew, mm. and so we went over for dinner. And I'm like, why is Miss Tyler here? Why is she here? They're like, but her her mom her and her mom was identical. Oh wow! I'm oh, like. Wow. Mother Mosley is her, your mother? Yeah. I was like, oh, wow. And it's just, and ev- you know, ever since then, it was just like, it didn't change the dynamic, but it just made it even better. Mm. Because I was like, maybe that's why the connection was there, because yeah. the love was there. Mm. And I didn't even know, you know, but um, it was her elementary. And then, um, oh, wow. In middle school, it was, we used to call him Jack, Mr. Jackson. Okay. And he did not play, especially mm. with the boys. Oh, we, they, he did not play. He, now, he had a thick paddle. With the with the handle, <laughs> and they came in his class late. You got one swag. Mm. He went by the minutes, mm. you know. And he, <laughs> and he, but you know, back then it was that's, that's was what, a, was. what was allowed. And then in high school, it was Miss Johnson. Miss Johnson was more was a, a whole like she was real passionate, mm. yeah. soft spoken, mm. and she. But she didn't. She was real firm, but she could look at you, mm. yeah. and you knew she wasn't playing. Mm. So I really had like three. And Miss Tyler, just like you said, we have a um a, a DeWitt uh DeWitt Clinton Elementary Facebook. And she's in there and it was it's just awesome because I know her children. We're we're like family. We are family. Yeah. You know, so those are my three. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. What about you, Pace? Well, uh my third grade teacher was uh my first teacher in public school. Mm-hmm. And once I got there, I couldn't read. So she was able to get that phonics together for me. Wow. Yeah. And I was I took off from there. Mm. And then I got to high school and I went to a boarding school in Kentucky. Okay. And I, uh, Diana Pauline, God rest her soul, she was a Caucasian uh, 
Appalachian woman, mm -hmm. and she opened my uh, eyes. I come from Detroit, an urban setting, and the experiences that I had with this woman just changed my uh, my life. So I was able to learn to love to read classical novels and debate mm -hmm. and <laughs> mock government and uh, you name it. I did a lot of... Um, poetry, writing, things that I didn't have the uh, experiences to do in Detroit said, and I was mm -hmm. able to do there with her. And so it just kind of sparked a love for learning for me with her. Okay, that's, mm -hmm. that's good. Yep. So that's like, good. so like, um, let's say you are the superintendent, superintendent and you're responsible for the education and everything. What are some things that you feel we could do better as far as teachers and just things that we can, what are some things you would implement that you feel that would help kids? Uh, well, I started off a traditional uh, trained teacher mm -hmm. and now I'm a Montessori educator. Okay. And so I have my own Montessori program. It's called High Achievers Montessori Learning Center. Okay. 24331 West 8 Mile Road. Say it one okay. more time. <laughs> 24331 West 8 Mile Road. Okay. And um, we serve uh, families with children the ages of two and a half to six. Mm -hmm. We also have an elementary um, academic enrichment program for children uh, that are uh, elementary age. So that's from like six to 12 mm -hmm. every summer. And so um, learning uh, a new philosophy and a new way of teaching um, from a early childhood mm -hmm. uh, position and point of view, children need to be developed holistically. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about um, you cannot, you have to let children uh, naturally uh, evolve mm -hmm. self develop and presenting those opportunities in the classroom that are most engaging where the inner self is curious to learn it things that children are um, like from zero to zero to two zero to six kids naturally learn you don't mm -hmm. have to show them they just gravitate and their bodies develop and uh, the experiences they have mm -hmm. is, is pretty much what helps them um, become the learners that they are. So um, it needs to happen first at home mm -hmm. and then it needs to be done on a holistic approach yeah. from a, a practical skill, everyday skill point of view, and then giving them opportunities to use um, uh, materials that are interactive. School has to be fun for kids. Yeah. You cannot sit kids in front of you and just lecture to children, give them worksheets and think they're going to regurgitate mm -hmm. and take on information that you just, you know, dictating to them. It doesn't happen that way. So I would change mm -hmm. the way that learning is presented from an early childhood position. I like that. Okay, um, last thing. As uh, far as like, um, like, we know you guys do your job and you guys are here. What are some things that we as parents can do better for our kids and kind of help with teachers? Like, is it like more parent teacher conferences? What are some tools or resources we can use? Like, what are some things that we as parents can do a little more to help you guys out? Um, I would say that um, I tell my parents that Montessori in the home is most important. Mm -hmm. And what Montessori does is this is uh, independence is most is what we focus on. Children mm -hmm. need to be independent. Yes. And yeah. we as parents do a lot for our children. Mm -hmm. And so they can do absolutely everything. Um, from the ages of two are the children in my building, they set tables, they clean up, they wash dishes, I they like do, that. they, they yeah. get their own learning, they put the learning away, they select and, you know, pretty much govern themselves. And that's what needs to happen at home. The mm -hmm. accountability on the parent yeah. needs to be taken uh, uh, into consideration too because you have to create those experiences for your child in the home mm -hmm. yeah. the culture in the home sets the tone for the child mm -hmm. that yes. you're going to have the, the, the 
person that you're taking care of is the adult that's going you're, they're going to become yeah. and so you have to know that you're the child's first teacher you're the model mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if you show them that education is important you sit there and you're reading to your child you're helping them you don't do it for them you let them yeah. you help them do it themselves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so uh that's what teachers need for you to make sure that your child knows that it's not a extrinsic reward that they're looking for this mm -hmm. reward needs to come from within mm -hmm. how do you how do you make your child feel fulfilled because they are doing something that makes them feel good mm -hmm. you, you're learning how to read you know you have, pr praise is not what you do yeah. you know it's just like it should be something done to the point where it's just like well you know that's a it's a it's a good thing it's a good thing that you were able to successfully do that. Mm -hmm. Read. Read how to develop your child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what parents need to do. Parents yeah. need to take the time to be the teachers. That's good. Because yeah. I feel like now we got the resources. You, you do. Of course. Yeah, you can, you can find anything things. now. You yes. can find mm -hmm. books. It's yeah. all types of mm -hmm. things you could do. Mm -hmm. But patience... And I said this to you last time. I want you on again. <laughs> but this time I want you on. I'm going to tell you the specific time. Uh, I'm not going to give you the specific date, but I'm going to give you the time. I want you to come back again in August before school starts. Oh, okay. So we have a whole different kind of conversation okay. right. about right. kids coming off vacations, mm -hmm. kids with proper sleep yeah, and kids, okay. certain things. Sounds good. Yeah. To how prepare to them for school. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what are some things, some discipline stuff yes. we could do, you guys do with the kids at school. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about that and just like things kids could do over vacation times, mm -hmm. how it is when kids first come back, the adjustments that you guys make and you know, and talk about more like um, things you guys did over COVID. Like, how was it doing with that? We're going to talk about that next time. <laughs> Sounds good. But I want to thank you so much for thank being you. here. Yes. Thank you. Thank so you much. Thank you so much, for inviting man. me. <laughs> yeah. And um, thank you guys. And please make sure you wash your hands, you wear your mask, and please make sure you're just doing things different. Showcase love to your family, your friends, and make sure you do everything you can do to make us God and everybody else proud. Thank you so much, guys, for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great week, guys. Have a great week. That was good. Okay. Mm -hmm.